What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are talking about iOS 9.3 beta 1. This thing just came out of the blue. I mean, obviously we expected a 9.3 beta eventually, but this really kind of came as a shock to the entire community because it's not a minor update. This is a major update with tons of new features and we're gonna talk about those new features right here in this video. But first, let me just remind you guys, if you appreciate this, hit that like button like it stole your lunch money. All right, so let's talk about the first feature here. It is, of course, securing notes within the Notes app. So you can now secure notes using Touch ID or password right within the Notes app. You can secure notes individually. So how do you secure notes? All you do is tap the share button right here and then tap password protect note, just like this. Once you do that, you're gonna get the password interface that pops up. You just put in your password, which you can set from within the settings app, tap okay. And once you do, you're gonna see it's locked. So now all you do is you back out, you can see it's password protected. You can go back into it as long as you don't exit the app. Once you exit the app and try to go back in, it's gonna require your password. So that means you can now use Touch ID or you can just type in your password in order to view your notes. This is really nice, especially if you have secure information within a note such as passwords or maybe your social security number or whatever else you may put in the notes app, you can secure it. Now you just tap view note and use your fingerprint to unlock that note. And you can also, if you want to, use your password instead of touch ID. So tap view note, then tap cancel, and then put your password in just like this and tap okay and that way you can get into your note with just your password. Now here's something to keep in mind. If you open the app switcher, but you don't actually switch from the notes app, then you can still go right back to that note. But if you switch to another application, then that note immediately goes into password protected mode. And then you have to, of course, use touch ID or your password to unlock and access that note. So very nice new provision for notes users. Now there are some additional settings to be found in the stock settings app here for the notes app. First of all, obviously the one we just talked about, the password, you can go in, turn off touch ID, turn it on, etc. change your password, reset the password, all that jazz. But there are some additional settings to be found as well, starting with sorting notes. So now you can sort by date edited, which is the default or date created or title as well. That's nice. Now, there is an additional setting here, save media to photos. So obviously in iOS 9, you can save pictures and things like that to the notes app. Now you can have it so it saves those photos directly to the photo library for archival pur purposes, I guess. All right, so let's talk about some other things here with iOS 9.3 beta one. Let's start with the photos app. We now have the ability to extract a still photo from a live photo like this. All you need to do is duplicate the photo. So we're just gonna tap the share button here and then find the duplicate option. So here it is right there. All right, now you see this new option, duplicate as still photo. So basically what this will do is extract the high quality photo from the live photo. So you have its own standalone still version of the photo like this. So this is a standalone photo. It is not a live photo. I can 3D touch on it and you're not gonna see it move or anything like that. That is its own high quality photo extracted from the live photo. All right, so let's talk about some other things here. How about the Health app? It now has Apple Watch integration, meaning that you can pull in your activity from the Apple Watch, like your move, your exercise, your stand, all that. That's really nice. Now you can see all that in one convenient location, which makes sense. Like. Obviously your stand exercise, your move data should be within the health app because that has a lot to do with your health, right? Now here's another feature that Apple has kind of Sherlocked. And by, by Sherlocked, what I mean is basically they've taken something that was really popular that someone else made and implemented it directly into iOS. And this is basically like Flux. Flux was an app, or still is an app, or a utility, I should say, that allows you to change the color temperature of your screen. Well, this does something similar. It's called Night Shift. It is a new feature in iOS 9.3, sort of the headlining feature, I would say. And what this does is it changes the gamma value of the screen. So you can warm up the screen easily and you can actually schedule it so that it warms up 
your screen when it gets dark outside, or you can set a custom schedule and really customize when the gamma values kick in and when they don't. So what this really the purpose of this is to make it easier on your eyes to read at nighttime and to make it easier to fall asleep. So that's kind of where that's going. Now, let me show you this right here. This is a new link within the wallet app. So uh, when you have a specific card linked and that card has a companion app, you can quickly tap a link within the wallet and open that companion app directly. So that's kind of cool. Not a huge feature, but nice nonetheless. Now let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about developers for a second. I know you may not be a developer, but developers are really going to appreciate this new feature. Now, it's not really so much a 9.3 feature, but it is a new feature that allows you to basically get onto the developer seed like this without actually having to use iTunes. So basically you can download a configuration profile to your iPhone and quickly access developer betas without actually having to install the beta directly from iTunes. That's really, really nice. Makes a Mac less and less necessary uh, for iOS users, of course. Now the news app got a pretty big update as well. Not only is it faster and you have new trends and things like that to make it easier to find stories for you, but also you can play videos right within the news app and still read the content. It's not gonna open the video in full screen like it normally does, which I hate like this. That's terrible. Now you actually have inline videos that actually play and you can go in and browse and read content uh, to your heart's content. Now that is really nice and I hope other apps adopt that. I hope that's actually adopted system-wide on the iPhone because I find that extremely, extremely annoying. So nice to see that it going in that direction. You also have landscape mode within the news app on the iPhone as well. So you can put it in the landscape mode, you can play your videos in line, all that looks really good. Uh, and of course, I mentioned some of the new trending features that allow you to find better curated uh, news content uh, for you. So. Very nice update to the news app. I think you guys are gonna like this a lot. Now let's talk about Apple Watch. Didn't I tell you this was a huge update? Even the Apple Watch got some love. The Watch app got some love uh, for the Apple Watch. Now you can actually pair multiple Apple Watches to a single iPhone. So when the new Apple Watch comes out, the Apple Watch 2 maybe, then you'll be able to have both devices, the old one and the new one paired at the same time. So all you do is tap pair a new Apple Watch and then just like normal, put your Apple Watch in front of the camera like this, tap start pairing and let it pair just like that. So now we can go through the update process. So multiple Apple Watches paired to the same iPhone that's now a reality, something I've been wanting for a long time because I do have multiple Apple Watches for testing purposes and stuff like that. So that's, that's nice to have. Not absolutely necessary, but nice to have nonetheless. Now let's talk about something I can't really show you, but I can tell you how it feels. You now get the haptic feedback or the taptic feedback when you invoke the app switcher using the 3D touch gesture from the left side of the screen, the peak and the pop. All right, so now let's talk about something extremely cool. You now have new 3D touch shortcuts, quick action shortcuts for all sorts of new apps like the settings app. You can quickly access wallpaper, battery, etc. For the uh, weather app, you can, you can quickly access locations or add a location. Uh, there's others. What about the compass? You can quickly get to start a level or start the compass. The health app goes to the medical ID or your dashboard. So these are all accessible on the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. Now, iTunes has view downloads and purchased, and there's others. For instance, the Stocks app, you can now search. Uh, let's think about some others. Oh, here's one, the App Store app. You can now update all or go to your purchase. So those are some new quick action shortcuts. Of course, my favorite is the Settings app one. Quickly get to your wallpaper, quickly get to your battery settings, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, etc. Now let me talk about something really cool. You now have iCloud for iBooks. Now you can sync PDFs, PDFs. Yes, you can sync PDFs now inside of iBooks. You don't have to go and re-download all your PDFs just because you're using a different device. Now you can use iCloud. That's really cool. So happy Apple finally did this. Now let's talk about a couple more features. CarPlay got some improvements, a new nearby feature for points of interest and enhanced Apple Music support. There's also some new education initiatives. So this isn't out yet, but Apple will have some multi-user support for the classroom, including a brand new classroom app 
for teachers. So folks, that has been iOS 9.3. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What's your favorite feature? And leave me a thumbs up. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.